and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today I am making a winter-inspired soap using this fragrance from Bee Scented. It's called Winter Garden, and it smells really good. It's very complicated. I'll I'll read the scent description to you later, but uh, it's very kind of fresh and bright smelling. Uh, the reviews said that it didn't cause discoloration, acceleration, or separation. I haven't soaked with this before, but uh, you're coming along, we'll give it a whirl. I just thought it smelled fantastic. So it got me thinking winter garden. I wasn't really sure what I felt inspired for, but I started pulling colors and it kind of came together in my mind. I definitely want to do piping on top of this soap also, but let's start with the colors that I that I grabbed. So I grabbed, the first one was Crimson Red Wine Mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Isn't that beautiful? It's just a shimmery red wine, red color. I thought that looked gorgeous. And then also I grabbed from Wholesale Supplies Plus Bell Bottom Blue. I thought those looked really pretty together. And then, I don't know if I can hold all these at the same time. I wanna do a little green, cause I'm gonna be piping. I got Jungle Green from Workshop Heritage, which is where my molds, my soap molds that I use are from. They also have micas, and this is a gorgeous green color. So that's gonna go in there. And then, <laughs> I, couldn't I couldn't stop. I was just grabbing colors. I grabbed Goldenrod Mica from Be Scented. So there you go. Let me see if I can flip these. There, kind of looks like a pack of Crayola crayons, doesn't it? <laughs> but we're gonna make this look like a winter garden. I'm not really sure what I was thinking, but they all really looked pretty, and so we're just gonna do something really swirly. We're gonna pipe a bunch of stuff on top, just rosettes and things. That's what's in my mind. I hope it doesn't look messy. I want it to, well, anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. You're gonna come along with me. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna do goat milk and oil method for this soap today, and uh, let, let me get everything pulled together, and. Uh, Hope that this doesn't come out to be some scrambled mess. I hope it comes out beautiful. Let's make some winter garden soap. We are back and it's soap additives time, but first I wanna read the scent description for this winter garden fragrance that I already put in the oils because it got good reviews that it didn't accelerate. So I'm trusting that it's in there. It's a little risky, but here we go. Uh, the scent description is uh, winter time during fresh falling snow, fresh squeezed limes, menthol, notes of Douglas fir, lavender, a touch of eucalyptus, and pine. It's a crisp and clean scent. That's how they describe it, and I think that's a really good description. It's uh, complex, it's fresh, it's bright. I just think it's fabulous. So I have all my colors off to the side dispersed in a little distilled water. My piping bags are off to the side ready to go. I just grabbed an assortment of little star tips to do rosettes and dollops and a leaf tip. Um, and they're just generic tips from, I got this massive pack on Amazon, so I don't have tip numbers for my uh, piping tips. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get to that when we do, but right now let's get our goat milk in oil method like I do. We'll get the goat milk in here that I've water discounted from the lye solution and then my dry additives, which are my colloidal oats and my kale and clay as per usual. So this is a two tablespoon scoop that I do and uh, these containers came with the scoops. They are from Dollar General. They were like $3.50 for one of these. So um, good deal for, they just have been wonderful workhorses for my dry additives. So that's where I got these containers. All right, let's get this all blended up and come back and get ready to make some soap. back and it's time to move forward with our soap. Here is my lye solution that has cane sugar, tuss of silk fibers, and sodium lactate. That's what's going on in here. And if you see the little fuzzy bits on top, that's just some of the silk and it just blends in perfectly. So it kind of looks like lint or something on top, but it's no big deal. Um, what I decided to do today with the pour, I'm going to talk about it first because once I get into it, I don't talk and multitask very well. So how I'm going to pour this soap is just one color at a time, sort of stacking on top of each other. Of course, I'm going to have breakthroughs and I'm going to run my hanger tool through the whole thing after I get it in the mold. But I'm going to pour them just one color at a time and stack it up and then we'll do a real swirly in in the body of the soap, real swirly design. 
Uh, and then the piping on top is just going to be random little rosettes and dollops. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm hoping this comes out okay. This will be fun to do, right? We're going to have fun today. We will see the final product, but uh, we will have fun in the process. So let me get this up to emulsion and we'll get all those gorgeous colors blended up. And we'll get to pouring the soap. It's the next day and ta-da! I think it came out really happy looking. I have no idea if that looks like a winter garden or not, but I think it's really, really fun and it smells great and uh, I'm very anxious to see what we've got going on the inside here. So let's get in here and see what we've got. With the lovely Olga. Time to get into our first loaf here. Oh, these tops are making me smile. Let's get in here and see about those swirls. I tell you what, <laughs> um, this fragrance felt like it was speeding up on me. In other words, it was starting to get thick, but it was very workable. Um, and Wow, oh, that's cool looking. So even though it felt like it was kind of speeding up, uh, 
when it came to the frosting and I got it in the mold and I ran the hanger through, uh, it was very smooth. So you were able to stir it down. Some fragrances, when they start speeding up on you and start moving, they just get hard and you can't work it. This was very workable. So that is a plus. Wow, those colors are very party-ish. <laughs> These are really fun. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking <laughs> they look more like Cinco de Mayo than they do a winter garden, but I still think they're really fun. Oh, these are happy bars, and I think I will have some soapy swirls. We will see if I can do soap patterns at the end. Interesting. I don't know, I think these are kind of groovy. Again, though, I don't know if these are evoking a winter theme, but uh, the fragrance certainly is. The fragrance smells very crisp and uh, it's a good scent. So let's keep going. All right, let's get into the next loaf here. You know what these kind of are making me think of is when I was a child and I was born in the 60s. I'm 56 years old as I'm filming this. So, um, you know, we're talking old school. People didn't have the same sort of decorating that they do now. There was no internet back there, you know, there were magazines, but um, nowadays I feel like the decorating style and aesthetic of things is so, the standards are so high because everybody's, you know, social media and um, there's just more information and inspiration out there. But these kind of remind me of our Christmas tree when I was a kid growing up. It was just loaded with a hodgepodge of ornaments just that had been collected over the years and all kinds of colors. Um, nowadays, you know, people will do tonal trees and they're very aesthetically beautiful. But when I grew up, <laughs> it was kind of a hodgepodge. And that's what this is making me think of. Maybe a 1960s vintage Christmas tree theme. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, so that's, and we had the big old uh, lights that would get hot on the tree, fire hazard, uh, the big screw in bulbs that you'd string and uh, getting the lights all, we'd have to get the lights out and run them up and down across our living room floor and check all the lights. Cause if one burned out, the whole thing was out, you know, the whole drill. This is back in the day, y'all. <laughs> Let's keep cutting. All right, last loaf here to cut. Anyway, yeah, the lights on the tree, um, you have to make sure they were all working before you go to the trouble of getting the tree strung up. And um, of course, back when I was a child and having Christmas and all that, there was no internet, there was no cable TV. When Christmas movies like, you know, Rudolph or just any of those would come on, you had to watch them when they ran. There was no video even when I was a kid. No, you couldn't record it. So you had one shot of seeing your favorite once a year Christmas TV shows. Uh, you'd have to <laughs> make sure you were home. Um, yeah, it's interesting how far we've come now. What was my, oh, I love Charlie Brown Christmas. Just love it. So these kind of remind me of an old fashioned Christmas lights on the tree. That's what I'm going with. So, very interesting. I think they're bright and pretty. And when I think of a vintage Christmas, I think these go along with it. At first I was like, huh, but now I get it. Okay, I kind of talked myself into the theme. So, let me know what you think. Do you have fun Christmas memories of your childhood? Or do you Hanukkah? You know, not everybody does Christmas and I get that. So <laughs> what do you do in the winter time for fun? Celebrate all that good stuff. So I'm going to let these sit out for a bit, come back and bevel and stamp all the good stuff. Thank you so much for watching and joining me today. And I hope that you have a really wonderful day.